lectures. It's a great honor for me. Please, Kevin Johnson, take the stage. Thanks very much. Are we on? Thank you. <laughs> I really hope I can do justice to that introduction, okay? Um, so, uh, basically, I'm giving, this is a very unusual talk for me. So, I'm going to talk about a philosophy uh, that I've been living by uh, for many years now. And uh, before, uh, right up front, I should say, I'm not proposing that anybody else should, should adopt this philosophy. The only reason I'm talking about it is that I've had now 30 years to, to run the experiment, and I can show you how it worked out. Um, so really, it's one of the benefits of age. You can, you can take a historical perspective on decisions you took when you were a very young man. Um, so the, the philosophy is best described in a, in a very simple mantra, uh, which is, do good, have fun, make money. And there are, there are a couple of things to say about this. The first is that these are in order of priority. So the top is the, is, the, is the top priority. And the second is that I try and do at least one of these things every day. And I can say that uh, today, I've spent the day at uh, CISA, I've definitely um, uh, ticked the middle box, because uh, I've had a lot of fun today. Uh, but what I mean is, uh, by doing good, is actually focusing not on yourself, which is typically what people do, it's a normal human thing, not focus on yourself and your own career progression and your own development and your own well-being, but rather to focus, in my case, pretty much entirely on other people's well-being and, uh, and, and their, their, their uh, place in life. And that actually came uh, in a very unusual way. Uh, this uh, picture on the left is my mother. It's the first time ever I've shown a picture of my mother in a presentation. And if she ever finds out, it'll be the last. Uh, but, but actually, she's the reason I'm here. Uh, not for the obvious reason, uh, but because when I was uh, actually younger than pretty much anybody in this audience, I think, you know, I had the same problem we all have. It's a dilemma. What do you do with your professional life? Right? All you can see is hundreds of, of possible career alternatives and, and things that you could do with your life. You don't know enough about them to make a choice. How can you choose? And actually, I don't think you know yourself well enough to be able to choose. And so while I was uh, uh, wrestling with that, uh, my mother was actually diagnosed with a, an autoimmune disease, uh, which is called systemic lupus erythematosus. And it's shortened to lupus. And it's a really uh, very severe autoimmune disease. It has features of rheumatoid arthritis, so pain in the joints and, and uh, stiffness, but lots of other conditions thrown in. It's like, a lot, it's like rheumatoid arthritis with lots of bonus conditions thrown in at the same time. And what was really noticeable about this, so she started drug therapy for this, and they, the drugs were rubbish. They, they, they're basically immune system poisons um, that have, uh, not only don't work very well, but they have really very bad side effects. So what I thought I could do was do something about that. And they, I thought that was, a, that was a legitimate aim in life. Uh, I wasn't smart enough to become a doctor or a, or a, a surgeon or somebody who could prescribe medicines, but what I thought I could do was work in medical research and at least uh, shed some uh, light on the condition and possibly how we might treat it. Uh, so that was uh, 30 years ago, roughly. I might, I might, I might, I might be uh, 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 modifying things a little bit. It might be more than 30 years ago. Uh, but, uh, but actually, what I can say with some certainty is that the panel on the right is a story from last week. So this was last the week last Wednesday. And uh, what, it's, what it's talking about is an antibody from my lab uh, when I was at Cambridge Antibody Technology being approved uh, for treatment of, of lupus. And this is the, uh, the first uh, new lupus drug in over 50 years. And that shows you how little innovation there's been in, in, in this condition. Um, so at the same time, this is, a, this is a, a thing of great joy. So this is, you know, it's taken long enough, but it's, it's a thing of great joy. But it's also quite sad, uh, because actually she's too far gone on the condition for her to benefit herself. Uh, but nonetheless, I think this, this is, uh, this is a, a, a great outcome. It's just that it's 30 years too late, really. Uh, luckily, not all problems were intractable. And this is another drug that's come out of my lab that's gone onto the market. This is a drug called Humira. It's a human antibody against a, uh, an inflammatory uh, protein called tumor necrosis factor. And this went on sale in two... Oh, 
went on sale in 2002. Uh, we did the submission in late 2001, but it went on the market in 2002. And it's marketed by a company called Abbott, uh, Abbott Pharmaceuticals. They're based in Chicago. Uh, and for them, this is a great product. It is easily their biggest pharmaceutical product. And in fact, Humira is projected to be the biggest selling drug in the world by 2015. Uh, when the, when the um, uh, cholesterol-lowering drugs from Pfizer and other companies fall off patent, what's left is, is, will be something like Humira. And this currently sells um, in the order of six to seven billion dollars worth of product a year. And the way that Abbott see it is a pipeline within a product. This is actually a slide they used to, to us um, because not only is it uh, useful in RA, it's useful in other autoimmune conditions like uh, ankylosing, ankylosing spondylitis, uh, Crohn's, and uh, juvenile arthritis. But for me, the real, the real value of Humira is, is, um, is this one, uh, because it really it, it works in, in most RA patients, but in some it works spectacularly well. We don't understand quite why, but some it works spectacularly well. And for them, it's life-changing, truly life-changing. If you've got uh, a chronic condition like this, uh, it usually hits you in, in, in later life, it actually dominates your life. You're always in pain, uh, you're, you're, you're compromised in terms of what you can do. So your quality of life really does plummet when you, when you pick up a condition like this. And as I could see from, from, from my home life, uh, th th this, is, this has a big impact. And actually, I think this is an important thing. I think the quality of life is, is critically important because the people in this room, you're in Italy, and most of you are, qu are quite young, you'll probably be the longest, people, longest lived people on the planet that the planet's ever seen, right? But you will then be a prey to these chronic conditions. And uh, unless we can do something about them, all, you're, not, you're not really living longer. You're just taking longer to die. So I think quality of life, this is not a life-threatening condition, but I think it's quality of life it's, it's, it's a, has a big impact on, on, the, on the people who suffer from them, uh, which actually could be any one of us. Fast forward a few years. The second line of the mantra is to have fun. And I think this is not so much a nice thing to have. I think it is absolutely necessary. You must have fun. Uh, that's partly in, in your day-to-day -day activities, but you, you spend too much of your time at work, too much of your time on your career, particularly if it's an absorbing one, for it to be anything otherwise. You've got to have fun out, 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 out of this. And I'd be the first to admit that if you try and do anything significant, it's majorly stressful. The Humira program is one of the most stressful periods of my adult life, right? But the, the fact is that one thing that's the common denominator of having fun is people. And it's the people you work with. I really love this photograph because it actually embodies what I mean uh, better than ever I could explain. So what, uh, this, is, uh, this is the uh, management team from my old company, which is Pangenetics. Uh, uh, the person taking the photograph... Uh, is, uh, is, was the chairman of this company, but he's also my partner in Index Ventures, uh, Francesco Di Robertis, who's Italian. And like Italians, he goes off in August for all of August. Uh, <laughs> and, and, and we needed to have a meeting. Um, so he was visiting his mother in Pro on Prosciutto, which is a lot, I presume most of you know where Prosciutto is. Uh, so we went out to Prosciutto, and this is a, a photograph of us um, just when we'd got off the ferry uh, and we were going to have uh, a tea with uh, Mama Francesco before we went off to, to have our board meeting. Uh, but, you know, we could have easily had this in Frankfurt Airport, right? It would have been the same content and probably the same cost to, to, to hold this meeting in Frankfurt Airport. It's just a lot more fun to do this thing in, in, a, in, a, in a great location uh, and Prosciutto is a great location. So this actually embodies what I mean by having fun. I think the people that you work with, and th these people I like very much, and I trust them completely, and those are the people I think that make uh, the stressful bits uh, less stressful, and then when, when you are successful, they're much more fun. Okay? I think the people around you have a big impact, uh, but you should definitely have fun. I'm also, uh, 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 I unashamedly, I'm a capitalist when it comes to, I'm actually it's my, in my title for Christ's sake, right? I, I'm a capitalist when it comes to developing uh, new drugs. I, the, uh, I'm not going to go into it, but there are all sorts of reasons why um, drugs really have to be developed in the private sector, that, that, that public money 
uh, charitable foundations really cannot support for long enough and fast enough the activities necessary to turn medical innovation into medical treatments. I just, I, I, I'm sorry, I just don't buy it. So basically what that means is that the business has to work as a business. It has to make money. And the, uh, the consequence uh, of that is that you have to be able to show financial success. So that's not simply in the drugs themselves, but that's in the companies that make those drugs, particularly if it's small companies. This is a, uh, a, a company, this was my first company that I joined as an, uh, from an academic post uh, with no training. This was just my, I decided my first foray was going to be into, uh, into, a, into a real company trying to do real, real uh, innovation. Uh, and the company was eventually sold. Uh, we started it in 1990. It was sold, I think it was around about 2005, uh, to AstraZeneca uh, for about a uh, billion dollars. Um, I think actually that, they, we, we, that was sold too cheap. Uh, it, it didn't really reflect what, what was in the company. But actually what I think doesn't matter uh, because the perception from people outside is that this company was a success. And that's what we need to have happen. Because if you've been successful in the past, people are much more likely to back you again. It's just the way human psychology works. They think, if you, they think that, that, that lightning is going to strike twice in the same place, basically. Uh, and they're much more likely to back you again. Plus, uh, the, the, the really good, the good people that you want working with you are much, much more likely to come and work with you if you've been successful in the past. Because they... They see you as a winner, and they want to work with a, with a, in a winning organization. Again, that's just basic, basic human nature. And so the, uh, I w what, what that does is actually it makes it even more likely that, that your second product, your second company will be a success. It's, it's a virtuous circle. And I think actually it's much easier being a serial entrepreneur than it is being the first-time entrepreneur. I think the first time is the hardest part by far. It's much easier, your way, is, your way is, 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 uh, is partly paved for you when you do it the next time. And that was the case with my, uh, with my uh, second company. I've only done two, or well, I've done a few, a few other little ones as well, but the, but the, the, the second uh, biotech company, which was this company called Pangenetics. And I really, uh, the, so the, this is a press release uh, from when we sold the, uh, the lead antibody to Abbott again. There's a, there's a theme developing here. Uh, but we sold it to Abbott again, and actually this was record-setting uh, amount of money for a molecule that was at that stage of development. It, it's, it's, the, it's, the, it's the example that's off the curve, off the median. And the reason I like this, this very much is because this molecule has its roots here in Trieste. And I'm here because uh, uh, when we were tying up the, 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 the uh, intellectual property uh, for, uh, as part of this deal, uh, I, uh, I spent some time with uh, Professor Fantoni and got to know the people here in, in, in Trieste. It's, it's actually it's quite a nice uh, story of, of how we, end, we ended up here. But again, this is, a, uh, this is a, an example of success and, and, it, and it allows you to create more success. Again, it's much easier once you've done it once uh, before. And of course, the, 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 with the um, commercial success, there also comes personal success. Uh, and uh, I've seen it happen a number of times now, both uh, with, uh, with uh, my uh, colleagues, ex-colleagues from Cambridge Antibody, and my colleagues from, from Pangenetics, where they are able to, to, to make, uh, make some money out of the companies that they've worked so hard to create. And, uh, and for them, it's, it's liberating, because no longer do they have to take a particular job because they need to pay the bills, they can actually choose. So it is, uh, it, it, it is and can be truly life-changing for the, for the people involved, and it makes them braver in their choices. So they're much more likely to take a high-risk role once they've had some success behind them because they're able to, uh, to, to say no uh, uh, to, to uh, offers that come up. Myself, I, I tend to, I, I, I prefer to keep on, uh, keep on uh, uh, doing my job and maybe trying, and now I'm trying the, a, a new avenue in, in venture capital. We'll see how that, how that works out. Uh, but, but, but really, I have to fund my penchant uh, for red cars uh, with a prancing horse on the front. 
Uh, I tell you that the running costs of these things are not, are not, are not trivial, so we need more success in the future. Uh, this is my F50, uh, and if you need to be told that this is a Ferrari, shame on you. Right? Uh, this is my F50, which not many people know is, is an absolute engineering masterpiece. Uh, it's, it's a fantastic machine, and hardly anybody knows about it. They're only made um, just under 350 of these, um, so you know, the, the word hasn't really got out. This one hasn't gone viral. Uh, the, the, one, oh, the one on the right is my first Ferrari. Uh, it's a 456 Modificato, and it's a sociable machine, because there are four seats in that one, as well as being, I think, very beautiful. Uh, but, uh, but clearly, in order to keep, keep, to keep myself in the manner to which I'm becoming accustomed, I need, I need to keep on going and, and, and be successful. But often, uh, when I'm out um, uh, driving these things, uh, people will stop me and say, what do you do? What do you do uh, to be able to, to buy such a nice car? And the, uh, the, uh, I tell them that they're actually focusing on the wrong bit. So basically, they're focusing on the make money bit. Right? So my answer to them is always the same, is that focus on doing good and being good at what you do, and the rest of it will come in its own time. Thank you very much.